In more news, Romania and Bulgaria have officially entered into an agreement with Austria. Romania chose an unprecedented route to land its next EU win. And it worked like a charm. After 13 years of struggle, the country is entering into the Schengen zone. But how did it overcome the diplomatic hurdle that was pushed by Austria? Let's just say that the Romanians aren't fond of betrayals. In this video, we're going to break down the issues with Schengen ascension, the case of economic retaliation, and how Romania neutralized the Austrian veto. Let's get started. The Austrian president has blasted his government for risking the country's economy. Alexander van der Bellen is regretting the EU crisis that ensued in 2022. The political turmoil in Austria escalated after an unpopular veto in the EU. For years, the European Union has vouched for an open border policy. Such measures vouch for freedom of movement and economic cohesion within the region. The ongoing migrant crisis in the Balkans has escalated. And now, the enlargement of the Schengen area has become a heated debate in the continent. At the same time, Schengen remains the key to economic development. And so far, it's been the EU's biggest selling point. All of its members wanted open trade routes for economic opportunities. This has been the story of Romania, too. The country went above and beyond to complete more than 200 Schengen acquis. They wanted to formally apply for the Open Border Economic Corridor. The only issue? Ascension into the area needed a unanimous vote. Even then, Romania was hoping for a smooth process. After all, no country in the EU, especially Romania's neighbors, had shown opposition until Austria blocked its entry, creating hostility between the two countries. The Austrian government has expressed concerns over illegal immigration into the country, which often goes unchecked because of a lack of regulations in the Balkan region. According to Austrian authorities, the current Schengen system has failed. The number of unauthorized entrants of migrants into the country is uncontrollable. Plus, Austria can't afford to feed all. The Austrian Interior Minister issued a statement in 2022, saying the system is currently not working. Austria got more than 100,000 illegal border crossings this year. 75,000 of them are not registered. Although we are an inland country, in the middle of Europe, in the middle of the Schengen countries. Do these statistics hold any credibility? Absolutely. But Romania was quick to counter Vienna. It argued that they're not part of the Western Balkan route that happens to be the culprit here. Not to mention, several fact-finding reports by the European Commission helped Romania too. Reports cited that the country has been managing its external borders seamlessly. So of course, the two sides of the story don't seem to harmonize whatsoever. Yet we also can't ignore the fact that Austria has some credibility in its claims. If you look at the Frontex's data, the agency that does border control of the EU, you can see the facts for yourself. It turns out that Romania does fall into the Western Balkan route. The same region detailed at least 128,000 border crossing incidents in 2022, which was an increase of 168% from the year before. The illegal border crossing issues can't be solved through vetoes and disagreements. That was a position the Austrian president had also maintained. The crux of the issue is simple. Is Austria solving the migrant crisis by blocking Romania's ascension into Schengen? That would be a hard no. If anything, Austria ended up implicating itself economically. In a powerful move, Romania's retaliation against Vienna came out strong. The general public turned the wave on the issue too. They wanted their government to fight Austria on all fronts. Membership in the EU meant Romania had two exclusive rights. First, to exercise its right to opt for the open border policy. And second, to fight off a robust measure such as Austria's veto. So what went down? Finding the video informative so far? Give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Here's the thing. Like other Eastern European countries, Romania has its fair share of Euroscepticism. It's true that EU membership has helped the country economically, but the general perception of European institutions is pretty bleak, particularly among the opposition party and their large number of supporters. Adhering to EU rules and regulations has entrenched Romania in several crises. Foremost, the membership has challenged the country's traditional and non-progressive values. 
When Austria used its veto to block Romania's ascension, Romanians became hostile. They also criticized the EU for not doing enough to resolve the matter. In November 2022, the European Commission ruled that Austria's veto was unjustified, and Romania met all of the metrics to enter the Schengen region. But of course, the EU's very own policy can't cause any retaliation against a country's veto. At the same time, Romania was taking strict measures too. It had threatened to take Austria to the EU Court of Justice. The situation ignited a wave of Euroscepticism in Romania, which was fueled by the popular far-right opposition parties in the country, such as AUR. The reality was hard to ignore. Romanians were calling for an effective retaliation. That's when the government considered sending a strong, decisive signal to Austria. And the route of choice was that of economic diplomacy. There was a lot at stake. The general sentiment on Romanian social media was hostile. Many Romanians believed that the interior minister hadn't done enough to secure the country's position in Schengen and called for his immediate resignation. The citizens also called for a complete boycott of Austrian companies, in particular OMW, the Austrian oil company that does business in Romania came under fire. Romanian businessmen kickstarted a campaign of their own, and they came for a very important Austrian asset, its multinational banks. For months, the Austrian government had strong-armed Romania into losing the Schengen bid. In the blink of an eye, the tables had turned. Leading Romanian companies made strong statements about cutting ties with Austrian-controlled companies which largely included Austrian-owned lender Raiffeisen Bank and OMV Petroleum. It's important to notice that these two companies were specifically targeted. Their importance to the Austrian government is immense. After all, Vienna extracts at least 7% of its GDP from Romanian consumers. 7%! It was obvious that Austrian banks were rapidly losing business. Raiffeisen Bank tried very hard to maintain its apolitical position in the matter. But the threat of losing big clients from the Romanian industry forced it to release a statement. The bank cited that it couldn't speak on behalf of the Austrian government. Yet, it was certainly surprised by their home country's decision to use its veto. Oster Group followed suit as well. With its major operations in Romania, the company didn't want to lose business. Even so, such countermeasures didn't help. Prominent Romanian industrialists like Dimitria Muska and Voiku Vushkan continued their boycott. Other sectors of society, such as sporting clubs, expressed their dismay too. The famous football club, Universitata Craiova, retaliated as well. In an explosive decision, they announced their boycott strategy. Other than the financial cutoff, the club refused to train in Austria. Plus, they began to use alternatives to OMW. At the political end, the boycott campaign was fueled by the liberal MEP, Radesh Bogdan. In fiery statements, he reminded the Romanians of the betrayal they had faced at the hands of Austria. For years, Romania had maintained a steady demand for Austrian goods like oil. In exchange, they were expecting diplomatic smoothness, which didn't materialize. Bogdan took a step further than anyone else in the government. The existing narrative was that private entities were boycotting Austrian banks and diesel. Yet Bogdan also prompted state-owned companies to do the same. The statement was hailed by the public. The call for a boycott continued until the government cracked open the veto. After a series of political talks, the two feuding parties found common ground. It's official. Economic retaliation works like a charm. By March 2024, Romania will enter the Schengen area through sea and air routes. The plan was put forward by Austria, who still fears the unprecedented migrant crisis. Yet, after months of hostility, it wanted to raise a white flag. Romania and Austria will resume the conversation on opening land borders, but those hard conversations will only begin in 2024. There's no doubt that the Romanian government is celebrating this feat. After all, the country will be in the Schengen zone after a decade of struggle, but the opposition parties are still skeptical. They believe that open land borders are critical for a country's economy. While Austria has been forthcoming in political agreements, it might sway again. Political experts cite similar concerns. They believe that both countries need to solve bilateral border security problems. 
Without such decisions, Romania might not achieve complete Schengen access. Even then, Romania has made progress in the matter. It took an undiplomatic route to solve the problem, but a win is a win. Did you find this video informative? Give it a like and make sure to watch our next video.